Yum, yum. It's kind of like Katana in a way, right? So you don't, you right. don't model in here. Mm -hmm. You bring in assets from Moto or, or Maya or wherever. Like the easiest workflow is Maya and Clarice, right? You model things in Maya. You, um, you could do UVs in Maya if you want, I suppose. Um, animate, dump out caches, and bring that stuff into Clarice. Yeah, you bring so, in Olympic files? Yeah, you or? bring in Olympic files. So okay. I'll open up... Uh, and so when you when you bring in an Olympic file, are you bringing in it as a reference, or can you also just bring it everything in as Everything is reference. Everything is reference. So in Clarice, at its core, it's just reading off disk. So the Clarice right. project file is nothing more than I can show you. It's best to show So you. like Katana or something, where yeah, it's, yeah. If I can referencing assets, it's probably super fast. Yeah, if I if I copy that and um, so that's the scene. That's the description of that VDB cloud. Right. So this is why it's really fast to load objects because all it's doing. Oh, it's there's like a ton of scenes. Open. Open. You can just do a text file. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And so I mean, these guys are old lightweight guys, as a matter of fact. So oh like, really? To hit, I didn't know that. Yeah. To hit uh, to hit keyframe, you hit enter. It does like no a, idea. Yeah. I'm a lightweight guy. <laughs> yeah, me too. So it's kind of funny. Um, so yeah, so basically it's a scene aggregator. So you bring all these assets in here. Everything that's in here might look at like this ground fog. Uh -huh. uh, you can see it's just pointing to this on disk. If I go to like my geometry, all these things are being referenced. Okay. So the referencing workflow, like okay, so if you know lightweight, so you're old school. Right. Like you don't really talk about referencing right. because Maya referencing was so rubbish that. <laughs> you just kind of, and that's why that's why places like DNEG invent all these shop build tools because you have right. to somehow manage assets in and out of software. Right. If referencing works, you can just use save files on disk technology. Right. But you can't do that in Maya. But referencing works in here absolutely perfect because at its core, it's always just pulling off disk. The right. only difference is, is if you reference something, you get these options here to reload the reference, to clear it, or to clean it up, and it just gives you like one layer of override. So any object in here. If I just go to this mid-rise building, you can see if I change something, it'll go blue. So it's updated that reference, and I can just revert it if I want. Interesting. So yeah. you can layer up uh, transforms or whatever. Yeah, like yeah. Form. You get you get a, it's you like get for a light rig. For me, it's as I'm in lighting TD, right? So for me, it's like, you know, maybe I have the light rig has been given to me. Right. My shot's been kind of like final, and I haven't touched it in a couple of weeks. I go update all my shot because they've changed something. Right. Like, I've already got my light settings good. Uh, I won't take any of the new settings unless I tell it, hey, go back to the new settings. Right. If I update my reference, it doesn't destroy what's in here. Right, okay. So, um, so yeah, so basically this scene here is brought up of all these, uh, made up of all these, basically these buildings here. So there's like, I don't know, maybe 20 or 30 buildings. So you bring in OBJs as well. Oh, yeah, these are OBJs from Kit Bash 3D, but pre oh, yeah. preferably Alembic. Into the future, it's going to be like a USD geometry node. Okay. So we're going to go full USD. Okay. Um, and what you do is you bring in these objects, and that's what Greg has done here. Uh, I'm not in the camera. Yeah, am I? So basically, just taking those objects, group them together. So if you look here in my uh, setup, Lord, are those buildings in the scene? Yeah. Uh, so wait, where's my setup? Okay. So yeah, so he's basically taken those buildings uh -huh. and he's made these little blocks out of them, right? So there's one version, there's another version uh, with all the neon signs and all this kind of stuff, right? And this is all built using scatterers. So what we can see in here is this textured thing. Here's a point cloud that we're hiding. Right. Uh, I can show you the point cloud. So you've got uh, maybe a grid of points there. Yeah, exactly. The are going on. I can't see them here for whatever reason. But yeah, you bring points from Houdini or you make a point cloud in here. Right. Or you can also paint points. I'll show you some of that stuff too. Sure, yeah. Um, so basically, once you've got all these little blocks, he's then taking those and he's building them back up to where it's got the whole scene. So you can replicate replicas. Yeah, and it's not, but it's, it's not different than Maya. I'm not sure about Katana, but if right. you duplicate a building, right. it's just reading the same building on disk. Right. And anything you modify to, it's like a delta, and that's what's being saved. So even though right. the scene has, you know, 4.2 billion polygons, right. according to Clarice, it's probably just a few thousand. It's just a handful. Because of it's things, just, right. yeah, it's just a handful of buildings that you're scattering. And so is there a limit to how much you can nest a replica? So you like replicate no, a building yeah. on a block, you're, you're you're a block on a yeah, torus, yeah, yeah. and a torus on a planet. I mean, you could go, you could replicate a brick into a wall, a wall into a house. You, you could do it crazy like that. Right. Um, I mean, and they could always change the buildings to rubber duckies or whatever. Whatever you want. It's very non disruptive. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, something else Clarice does really well is handle volumes. Probably better than any other software. So, it's just I have this nice uh, smoky volume here. And again, this is 
Clarice is built on a ray tracer running on CPU right now. Yeah, I had heard that. Now, this is a CPU. Yeah, really it's just an i not i7 or maybe a Xeon right. or something. I'm not a hardware geek, so I couldn't right. actually tell you. But it's all running on CPU, and because of that nature of its architecture, that's why it's so fast at all this stuff. So also, it's why this view is so pretty is because effectively, it's the same ray tracer that produces the image. If you go to the image view, this is your like rendered image here. So you're always working you're with always, the, the final material. You're always the same in that scene. As absolutely, and you, I mean, and effectively, if I go here, you can see. Let me go to maybe shot camera. Let me so this, hide is like a, this is a progressive renderer here, but looks like you had buckets going on in the image renderer. Is yeah, it, uh, it's doing it's doing buckets. Yeah. Uh, I'm just gonna hide all this. But you can see that like once this uh, once this resolves, you can see that. I mean, you can already see, you can clearly see that this is very much what I'm getting in my final render. Oh, yeah, yeah. So with Clarice, the big difference is when I was working in it at DNEG is you just live in this 3D view. Right. You kind of get out of the paradigm of kind of doing lots of layout and grayscale view and then right. jumping to your render view and like doing little test swatches. Of, like, right, right. You start yeah, just working. Right yeah, yeah. No more region rendering. I mean, obviously you can. It's possible for, I mean, if I really want to see this, what it looks like, I'm just going to region render it and let it let it crank. Sure, right. Um, but it's like it, it's the same material value, so like the specularity is not going to be different absolutely. here than it is. And it's, it's a little bit harder to see in this scene if I open up, let's see. It seems so huge, it's crazy. So, yeah. I see a lot of like forest and that kind of stuff work being done. You know, there's some motor users who use Clarice. They'll go put out images of like you know, islands with a bunch of trees and things like yeah, that. That's yeah, yeah. Like, That's the, I mean, yeah. the, the use case that it's best designed. I mean, if you're rendering this, if you're rendering this scene right here, if this is CG, I mean, Maya Arnold's going to be fine. Arnold's a beautiful renderer. I right. mean, everything is. All the, all the renderers now are nice. So what if you wanted to do that? What if you wanted to do a really fast, speedy setup in here? You're going to get pretty much the same materials in, in Arnold or whatever. It will be exactly It'll, the same. But can you export a scene out of here? Or I mean, you can export John, anything in here you can export as an Alembic. Oh, okay. The situation you're going to have is that when you export a 5 billion games. polygons, yeah, you're not going to open that in Houdini or Maya. Right. I'm just loading this scene because this has a really super heavy CAD object in it. Oh, cool. So this race car is from CAD, so it's like really super dense. Interesting. Okay. And I do so, a lot of CAD work. Oh, really? Really? So yeah. yeah, and you know, you don't want to unwrap UVs, this stuff's being projected, no. but why I'm showing you this is because, again, this is just the 3D view that in Katana or right. Max would be, maybe you have some kind of hardware rendering, but you don't have this feedback. And then when you start to do look dev, this is where for me also, I'm like, man, this is amazing. You can get, I'm tuning the blurriness of this right away. Right. Um, without having to wait for any test renders. I can, so, I can turn on my optics denoiser here, so using AI denoiser, this oh, does, the that does right. run, if that's on, that does run on the GPU. Right, yeah. Um, but yeah, so this is the kind of feedback that you just, it's pretty incredible to get, considering, I mean, this is 20 million polygon, well, I guess it's 19.416 million polygons because I have the ground. Right, so there's really <laughs> two things going on here. Like, there's a lot of uh, GPU renders nowadays that will give you very quick feedback, but yeah. you're not going to get a 4.6 billion polygon scene no, on no, no. GPU. No, no, um, no. So you're running CPU here. I, I'm working on some scenes where I've had to switch back to CPU rendering uh, just because I don't have enough memory on the GPU. Yeah, I mean, that's the big thing. A lot of our clients are DNIG, right? So, right. like, uh, uh, they have these dirt. It's, it's usually about. It's not really about the geometry, the like modeling and stuff, not like hard right. surface. It's always the VDBs. They, VDBs they, they have so many attributes in them that the files are huge and they take ages to sim. So you can bring in a VDB from Houdini and yeah. grab the temperature and the density. Absolutely, and you and extract. You have a node called extract property. That's how you would do fire. Oh, okay. Can um, you kill properties you don't use to, to make them smaller? <laughs> uh, well, like I don't um, like that. I don't know exactly. Um, like the material editor here. Uh, I do extract property. So it'll sort of scan the VDB and it can be yeah, exactly. properties that are embedded. Exactly. So this this material is not hooked up to anything that has a property. Well, it does. It does. Uh, these are some default ones, I suppose. Right. If I hook this up to, I don't know, front color. I guess these are just default ones that are in this geometry oh, okay. since this has been all on that ground object. But yeah. So I mean, I rip out. I've done a fire in Houdini usually using a. Uh, temperature or fuel or sure, whatever yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, I'm not a Houdini expert. What about either. texture maps? Can you do tile DXR images to save on uh, rendering? Uh, oh, TX, like TX files? Yeah. Yeah, yeah preferably, I mean, it does anything you want, but preferably TX files okay. is the way to go for professional users. Um, yeah, because those kill you too once you get a few yeah. hundred of those. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I was going to show you this. This is something kind of neat about Clarice. It's a... It's a uh, Oh, 
Uh, please find it. Uh, What's it called? I don't know. Uh, uh, sorry, man. It's all right. I have a million different versions of Clarice open. I think that's... Holy cow. Lord, Lord only knows which version <laughs> is, like, recent. Maybe... I'm not going to waste your... Oh, there we go. Okay, cool. So, something cool about Clarice is because it's always ray tracing, uh -huh. you can do some really interesting things, right? So, if I go to, like, uh, my flat shaded here... So you'll see I have like this so, ground. So that's ray trace. This, 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 is a, this is a, even though I'm just a bounding box view, it's ray trace still. You're always ray tracing. That's so what, what I'm doing here is, if you see I have on this ground, I have a uh, displacement. Where's my displacement? I have a displacement here. Okay. So what's cool about my displacement is, is that the, the texture is the occlusion node. So what's the occlusion node? So the occlusion node, is this taking the real-time occlusion so it's off of my scene? the proximity of those uh, yeah, primitives exactly. to the ground plane, and exactly. you're using that to drive a, yeah, a, a exactly. fractal or something. Yeah, like yeah. So, but that's, so that's wait, wait, move that around. So that's so it's calculating occlusion, uh, sort of a, a distance approximation yeah. in real time, using that as a mask Absolutely. for your fractal displacement Absolutely. while you're dragging it around. Absolutely. This is the displacement. So. You could use this occlusion node to drive the decimation of a point cloud, and that's my production experience, is that on Alice Through the Looking Glass, we had a bunch of houses on a field. Right. I had gone and painted a bunch of particles, specifically on here, oh, this right, flower right. there, this flower there, put it in dailies, and they're like, hey, we need to move these houses. And I'm like, oh, man, that's, all the ground is moving again. and undulating. It's kind of killed a little bit of that work. So what I did, instead of hand painting those clouds, or those point clouds, right. I just used the occlusion. And so then whenever I moved the house, it, goes with it. it decimated the point cloud, and my point cloud moved with the terrain perfectly. Um, driving with occlusion is cool. Um, if I go back to that. And so anything like occlusion or uh, maybe a cavity mapper or something like that is available as an input to another. Absolutely. Code. Absolutely. Okay. And so I'll show you just quickly another way that that works is I'm using that ray traced curvature again to generate this uh, image here. It's multi-threaded. It runs really fast. So this is basically using the ray trace curvature of this object okay. to give me all this data. Sure. I'm then saving that to disk, and then I'm bringing that back out as a mask on this object here, right? Wow. So now I'm using these curvature renders, which you can see here, uh -huh. and I'm blending everything together. Procedural. Right. So, so if this model changed, that crease would move with it. It's just all right. It's so all very alive. Right. So it's taking uh, just real time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like curvature occlusion, which has to generally ray trace. Yeah, exactly. So it's another way you can use the fact that we're always ray tracing to use masks and maps that you can use to affect your texture nodes and brands right. and stuff. That's cool. Um, I'll show you something else you were just talking about. Um, so I'll make a point cloud. Um, depending on what you're doing, these point clouds may come from uh, Houdini even. That's a big popular workload at DNEG that we used on Star Trek Beyond for all those swarm ship things. Uh, You've seen Star Trek Beyond, all that yeah, swim ships. Yeah. Those are just poor, uh, Houdini point clouds. Yeah. And my ironic, my ironic story there is that, you know, I had to have a shot in dailies before they uh, had done any LODs on the swarm ships. So I just had to use the hero. <laughs> so I was like, I was maybe worried, but it was no problem. I just used the hero swarm ship, and it was no problem. And then they were able to cancel that. Uh, well, what's interesting is we found out a long time ago. Uh, uh, Working with we used to be like Solidity, they were creating a, a ray tracer for SolidWorks. Uh -huh. and that the really heavy CAD files were faster to display in ray tracing than OpenGL. Right. It just came up faster. But you guys were going to took that to another level, or maybe somebody noticed that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know the right. genesis of how Sam and Seb designed yeah. this stuff, but it, they've got they they're pretty smart guys. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'll show you this. So, like I was saying, any. Any, anywhere you see this, it can be driven by a texture. So that texture could be occlusion, okay. so to decimate the point cloud, or we have an object called a scope. Um, so let me just... A uh, scope? A scope, yeah. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drive my decimate value, which is decimating you know, where I'm going to have these balls. Sure. I'm going to drive that with a scope. And a scope is effectively a texture in 3D space. So let me just add the act. That's kind of like the scope container. Then you add the scope object. Okay. And you can see already what's going to happen. Like I have this object here. And anywhere I have the scope, oh, okay. it's removing objects. So this is how you can have like a scatterer. Right. But maybe I have one hero building that I want to be right there. 
So a scope is a container for something, I guess it would be maybe a center board or a little fall off. Yeah, like a fall off. And I'm using it here to decimate points. You right. can use this to drive a blend. So if you imagine scattering a crowd, the crowd has a t-shirt shader and you have a blend with like going to a red shirt or a blue shirt or whatever. And then you have a scope, you put it over these guys and they're all wearing red shirts. So it's shirts. a generalized tool. It's a generalized maybe you're tool. Decimating, maybe you're decimating, maybe you're doing shading. Whatever so you it want. sounds like some of the field stuff. So yeah. Really showing, so. And so like Very if cool. I want to export these oh, trees yeah, right. in the Houdini to run a sim, I do this. I take them out, I run my sim, I invert my scope, I pop in the, uh, the animated little lambeck. Right, right. And this is how they do like on our demo, you see Kong and he's smashing that lizard oh, creature yeah. against, they basically scatter all this photogrammetry stuff in speed tree, isolate the area that needs interactivity, out of into Houdini for sim, back into See, Clarice for rendering. So you can set up because we get the assets in there from other programming. Yeah. Clarice, so like Excel, Zag, grabbing all the stuff, yeah, set right. the scene, here's our heroes stuff, we need to send that back to Houdini guys or whatever. And uh, you can do that without having to rebuild uh, the right. scene here. Right, right, That's right. Really cool. So it's pretty malleable, and I mean, it's the main tool at DNEG now. It's pretty heavy at ILM and the generalist department. So people life. have paid the larger production companies that have picked it up as something they want to use a lot. Yeah, That's probably because, more your focus, I guess. Well, like, I mean, for, it's, the, it's the way it's happened. I mean, we're right. trying, me and my partner Nina, who's uh, off right now, um, we're trying to get it more at the small and medium-sized studios. Right. Because you don't need an engine. It, it works great out of the box. So you don't right. need a big engineering staff to right. do anything. I mean, the biggest, the biggest... Uh, well, let me ask. Let me ask you this. There's a lot of people who do our, like Archviz work, which has a lot of detail, yeah. and oftentimes it's just a lot of landscaping and things like yeah. that. So you got speed tree stuff coming in, um, and programs like Moto or Max, which are used for that type of stuff, sometimes you know from through the weight of all that all yeah. those assets. So maybe uh, like a yeah like a niche version for. Uh, uh, Clarice here would be some of those guys who learn how to use it, which it seems pretty easy. Yeah, it's pretty you can easy set to scatter in assets in here, and yeah. of course it's got a good renderer as well, so you can I, actually do I it. love it for ArchViz, and 4.0, which is coming out any day now, it has portals, and they've done some features oh, specifically okay. to excel or rendering internal lights. Sure, yeah. So we do portals so the lights inside are, uh, you know, it's efficient. So it's a full-blown rendering yeah, engine. It's absolutely. not just a preview tool. No, it's not a preview. Yeah, this right. It's full-blown, I mean. Surface scattering and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I don't know. These are some rent images that some students have done, but just an example oh, wait, of. That's a nice one. Yeah, and we have Speed Tree integrated now as well. Did I say that? I don't no, know if I said that. Uh, yeah. yeah, so if you come here, I can actually try to do this. We'll just do a, a Speed Tree model. Oh, nice. It does have the animation parameters. Yeah, Speed man. Tree has. It's awesome. So then I go here and I find my file name Speed Tree Cedar. I don't know which one this is. I've loaded that tree now. I'm showing it as a spike, but I can show it as like a low, I guess. Oh, Boom, dude. I have my tree. And then I can say, make materials. It'll make materials. So it should be green now. Is this some special version of Speed Tree? Or? Uh, it's just a new 4.0 has Speed Tree. And you, just, and you read in the STE files, I guess. So you already have a library. Right. And then what's super cool is the tree has all these exposed attributes. I haven't ever used Speed Tree. Yeah. Um, so it has like what I thought was cool. You have your wind source here, yep. all this kind of stuff. But what I thought was cool was the uh, season. So you can like drag oh, it. Oh yeah, I change the color of the leaves. And stuff. Yeah, and it'll it'll update that as well. So Speed Tree has something as sort of a parametric tree building software. Yeah. We haven't used it, and so you can do things like um, I think they call it, they call them seed files, right? Yeah, right? So all those parameters are wrapped up in a seed file, and you can import those. Sounds like you can import those directly into Clarice. Yeah, and you, you can know, scatter those all over. And your have, yeah, tons yeah. of parameters, you can, and then you can animate branches and wind speed and stuff. And normally you'd have to import an Olympic file to I think to get that type of thing. But Absolutely. here you can just grow them and. They quite just grow the damn things out of yeah. it. Yeah, and then we just started talking, I just talked to the guy from Substance, and we're gonna do the same thing for Substance. So you'll be able to make your, your shader in Substance Designer, uh -huh. and then use that directly in Clarice to feed the Clarice shaders. Oh, nice. So really trying, to, really trying to nest Clarice in is almost like a giant Uber plug-in for everything else in yeah. a way. Like you're just plugging stuff That's into Clarice. what it Clarice. sounds like, a sort of a, yeah, sort of the box or the, the, yeah. the platform for all these assets. Um, running out of time. 4%, man. 4%. All right, okay. we're going to wrap it up. All right, cool, One man. cool image here. Let's get Obviously. that. Yeah, this is cool because this is uh, actual render. So if I change my lighting, it changes the lighting on all my projections as well. So that's something cool. If I look at, and this is my uh, 3D view here, you know, so if I look. 
It's just a bunch of cards. It's a bunch of cards. But these cards are actual renders being produced in these other contexts. Oh, I've seen this the, thing yeah, produced before. It's and really cool. Sort of pre-copying. Yeah, comps. like live. You're, you can use a live render as right. a texture map. Yeah, that is a weird thing. Really, it's a, it's, it's <laughs> yeah. weird, but people like the guys at Scanline love it for their environment department. Oh yeah. And DreamWorks as well. It's kind of changed. They're doing less photography and taking photos off the internet, yeah. and more like rendering a model that from the hero model department. I sort of using that as a thought of it as like an After Effects pre-comp almost, where you grab a you know you could grab a thing, you know, it's pre-comp, and anything that goes there propagates up to the yeah. The render. That's kind of what's happening yeah. there. Yeah. Well, so, really cool. Thanks for taking dude, the time. No worries, Great man. demo, Eric. Yeah, and, thanks. Uh, appreciate all it. All right, Clarice, enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> yum yum.